in the last video had some problems with the page loading up for the first time because the F name, L name, and about have not been submitted yet through the post method. And so they don't exist and I get errors. And so what we'll do in this particular video is since everything is an all-in-one type of a page where I've got my form and I'm submitting it back to this page, the only problem when you do it like this is the fact that you need to write a little bit of code on here that's going to only run this if the submit button has been pressed. And so I'll show you on this video how to run or block out an area of code here that will run only when the submit button has been pressed. And it's really, it's an easy function. We're going to basically use an if statement and we're going to basically say if the submit button has been pressed. And so within the if statement itself, and I'll go ahead and put the little if and then the two um, parentheses after that, what I want to have in here for my condition is I want to check to see if it's been pressed or in PHP language if it's been set. And so what we'll use is a function called is set. And then that's a function, so I'm going to have to put two parentheses in there. So now I've got quite a bit of parentheses here to work with. So type in the is set with the two parentheses. Now in the is set, we're going to want to return back if it's a true or false. Basically, we're checking to see if a button or there's an element that has been set within my post information. And I want to, I want basically looking for the submit button is what I want to look for on this particular if statement. So what I'm going to type in here on the is set parentheses is going to be the dollar sign underscore and then post and then I'm going to use the submit element of this array so I'm going to type in submit here like so and so I'm really checking to see if submit has been pressed one important thing to remember is this submit if you highlight it here you can see that the submits it's going to be all lowercase the name of the submit object is lowercase here it has to be the case same casing as it is found in both of these forms. But now that's going to check to see if the post has been submitted. If it has, if this is true, if this returns back a true, that means my code here is going to run. So I'll need to have the opening curly brace and then an ending curly brace down here at the bottom. And this is going to make it so that this code will only be used or only be accessible when the submit button has been pressed, which is now going to make it so that if I close my page, let's go ahead and close that tab. There we go. And I'll just type in localhost and I'm going to go back to where my web page is located under the lessons folder that I created in page1.php. Actually, let me refresh it. I didn't save it. There we go. Now I'll do a refresh. Now it goes away. I needed to save that. So now that I've got that saved and I've got it refreshed, basically the first time this page loads, and I'll go ahead and do it one more time just to show you. I'll go ahead and go to localhost. And I'll go ahead and come down here to Lessons, page one. You can see that those errors have gone away. So that's the one key thing you have to remember when you're working with one of these all-in-one type of forms that have the PHP code being processed within the page as well as the form being within the page. Now in the next page, what we're going to do, or next lesson, what we're going to do is talk about how to check to see or make sure that there's some required fields, that there's things that have been set. And if they haven't been set, give the user an indication that they need to type something in in a particular field.